talking about. Okay, this I think is the latest phase in this story. KABC Los Angeles this week reported this. Uh, Las Vegas police placed cameras in the backyard of a family's home where they claim aliens crashed last month. Remember this? We talked about it for the last couple of weeks. Las Vegas family called the police after aliens supposedly crashed in their backyard. Family members were recorded saying they saw an eight-foot person with big eyes that is not human. Police body camera footage also showed something falling from the sky. Now, we have to say that astronomers said that was a meteor because of the way that it was travelling. No doubt about that, they said. Um, According to sources close to the investigation, law enforcement are not treating the incident, this is according to this report this week, as a hoax, and have placed cameras in case the aliens make another landing. I'm quoting from this. I think those cameras may now have been removed. But this was a story that got a ton of traction. And a man who actually went there and met the family who experienced all of this in Las Vegas is Doug Popper, former criminal investigator and host of the Doug Popper podcast. He has literally made the running on this story. So I'm thrilled to have him online to us now. Doug, thank you for doing this. Good evening, Howard. Nice to be on your show. I have had some people castigating me for covering this story because they tell me this is an obvious hoax. And I've been trying to tell them it's not as clear cut as that. Where are you at on this story at the moment? I got the same response when I started investigating this. This is really the first uh, UFO led UFO incident I, I've investigated, mostly do murders and, and police corruption and stuff like mm-hmm. that. But here's where we're at. I broke the story. I actually broke the story on May 18th in my Twitter. And my first podcast, episode 142, was um, on the 22nd of May. And uh, long story short, I had no limit on time. But uh, I had two interviews with the uh, with the family, first on the 19th and then uh, an extended one on the 27th of May. And uh, the first time it was a little hard to get anything out of the family. They didn't trust me. So but they end up talking a little. I talked to the son, Angel. Angel is the uh, is the son who first made the first 9-11 call to the police dispatcher. And then uh, the father got on the phone. Uh, his name is Bobby. Right, and so it's important to make, that, isn't it, make the point that a couple of generations of the family wasn't just the kids who reported this. That, that's exactly correct. Uh, the, the son, Angel, saw it. His brother saw the creatures. The father saw the creatures. Now, the father didn't see the, the alleged craft when it came down. He was in the house. But he, I was out there. He actually described them to me the same way the son did. I was standing next to a pole that was holding up the, the large carport. I'm almost six foot one. And he said to me, the father, he says, uh, that pole you stand next to, it was actually bigger than that. I looked up at the pole, it was about eight and a half feet. And Angel said, yeah, it was even bigger than the pole. Uh, d- described the same thing that the, the two sons were describing to me. Now, you talked about the cameras. Um, on the 19th, when I was up there, it was about 12, 1230. It was actually later in the evening. I was up there in the morning. I couldn't get a response from the family. I went back later that night. And the mother came out when I was talking to the son, and she said, I saw the surveillance cameras. She said the police had come out earlier that afternoon and installed a police video and audio surveillance system on the pole in the back of the house. This was the city police department, not men in black. These are confirmed by my sources. It was the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department. It was put in by the Holman Security Division, and they were put in a pole, a light pole in the family's backyard. Homeland Security. Okay. Yes. Uh, the, the, the LVMT, the police department, has a Homeland Security Division, mm-hmm. and it was the technical squad called TAS, the technical and surveillance squad, that installed the cameras on the property. So I talked to them for a little bit. Uh, the mother told me a lot of stuff. I don't know if you watched the podcast. Everybody's watching the, my podcast, and the stuff was in there. Mm-hmm. Now, I went back on the uh, 27th, and they actually, this time, the first time, they wouldn't let me into the house. They wouldn't show me the yard. They didn't trust me. And um, the little interview that I got with them, they were concerned about having their last names and their faces on, on, on my podcast or broadcast. And so I said, listen, I'll make sure everything I put out does not show the home. Uh, I will not use your last name and will not show your faces. And that's what I did. So when I went back there on the 27th, um, actually, I didn't think I was going to get an interview. I was talking, go knocking on doors, uh, looking for neighbors if they had anything. And a neighbor to, uh, would be to the right of that home, uh, she, the, the woman in the house and the husband says, my wife heard a, a thud about the same time on May 1st when this thing supposedly was supposed to come so down. So that's corroboration? It's corroboration, and she even said that she was interviewed later on, whether it was that same night or early in the morning, by Las Vegas Metro police officers. 
So she heard a thud, like something was coming down. Uh, Angel, when I spoke to him, he said, of course, they were working on the cars. They, the, the ground shook. They heard a noise. And when they, he looked in the back uh, with his brother, they saw whatever came down was blurry. He said we couldn't see it. And then the blurriness disappeared. When the blurriness disappeared, they saw these creatures walking away from whatever this thing was that came down. How many? I got to remember, like you said, uh, that night, everybody saw this meteor mm -hmm. uh, across three states. So that was when I first started doing the investigation. How many creatures I, were there? Excuse me? How many creatures? Um, he said two. Him and his brother said two. Um, Both eight his, foot tall? Eight to ten feet tall. That, that's what they said. And... Uh, you know, he, he described what they what they look like, neon eyes. Um, he said one of them, uh, later on, he said it had human eyes. Now, what's going on with, with Angel up at this point? I got new information last night I'm still looking at. He has since given some interviews uh, on some UFO podcast, and he's saying stuff on those podcasts that he did not tell me. Um, uh, for instance, when I was back on the house on the 27th, they brought me to the backyard, and he said, we don't have any kids and we don't have colored chalk. And he showed me some etchings, chalk marks uh, in the ground with appeared to be an angel, uh, a tree and some boulders. And he said it was not there the night before the incident happened. When we opened up the door in the morning, we saw these etchings in the ground. And I saw them. And I said, what relevance does that have to the, the incident? And he didn't come out and say that he thought these creatures may have done it, but it was like an insinuation. And um, he said they weren't there and it was there in the morning. And then he said, look at the angel, you know, written into the ground. And the tree and the boulders, he said, look at over there. That's the stuff in the yard over there. It's like somebody copied it. So I put that in the back of my head. I didn't think it was relevant at the time. He has since elaborated on that and on a video on one of these UFO podcasts. And then he also had something to me that I thought was completely strange uh, about a week ago when I was on the phone with him. He said, I just want to let you know, um, because after these meetings, I have telephone conversations also with him and, and the mother. And he said, I want to let you know, Doug, that about two or three months before this incident, uh, me and I think his brother and his cousin or somebody, they were, they were at a gas station. He said some black woman came up, knew his name, and told him that uh, this was coming off the top of my head because I didn't record it. He said that uh, she said that in, in a couple of weeks or something, aliens or demons are going to come down to the earth okay. and do something. So, look, um, one of the things that, that, and sadly we don't have a ton of time, I'm really pleased that I've got you on here, Doug. Maybe we can talk longer in, a, in another format, maybe my podcast. But why come out with further details later at the point when some people are starting to say the whole thing is a fake? It's almost as if if I was somebody who'd made something up, then I'd come up with a few more details. Um, you're convinced that's not what's happening here? Uh, n no, I'm, I'm not convinced. Like I said, I got more information last night. Uh, when he when he made that remark to him, I said, <clears throat> Angel, excuse me, I said, that sounds freaking crazy. Yeah. People are going to start questioning your credibility. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> excuse me, the allergies are terrible out here. And he said, well, that's what happened, and we saw what we saw uh, in the yard. Okay. And I keep telling people from the beginning of this podcast, uh, I believe they saw something in the yard. You looked at the video that they put out. They obviously were scared of something. What that something was, a shadow, a ghost, an alien, I don't have any idea. But, but like I said, Angel has been out there, and he's saying a lot of stuff right now um, that, that, that is a little bizarre that he did not tell me uh, when I spoke to him on those two interviews. But you've looked at them, you've talked with them, you've got a kind of rapport with them. You believe them. I, I, I spoke to, listen, I, if it was just this, uh, the two kids, mm -hmm. I would have said they saw the meteor coming down, and then they made the story up. But I spoke to the father. He explained to me exactly what these things look like. I mean, he's an intelligent man. He also got on the phone with the police the night when Angel called up the dispatcher, and he said the same thing. She puts in the log. Father's on the phone, said he saw creatures 15, 20 minutes ago. So, you know, you cannot call 911 and put a hoax. That is a crime, in, you know, in the state of Nevada. And, most and, other and states, not, the, the police are not taking action against them for misusing or wasting their time, effectively, which is an offence in your country and an offence in my country. I think there's more to this than meets the eye. I don't know what it is, Doug. Sadly, we're out of time on this format. And like I say, thank you. There was a report that what, didn't some military people, it is claimed, comb or scour a nearby lake. I wonder if you can just tell me about that in 20 seconds. Yes, one of the news broadcasts put out that this this guy was out searching. He said supposedly something was shot down and crashed in Lake Mead and there was military activity out here. I cannot confirm that, but one of the national networks did say that.
Doug Popper, former criminal investigator and host of the Doug Popper podcast, where you will find out more about this. I'm really pleased. Thank you very much for making time for me. The Unexplained from Talk TV, we talk a lot about artificial intelligence here. The Sun this week had a great story. If artificial intelligence goes wrong, there are three possible outcomes that each spell doom for us. Uh, Mo Gordat, arguably the most knowledgeable AI expert on the planet, told the US Sun that as artificial intelligence increases, the competitive nature of humanity will also 